Even all remarks here, back again with another video, back again with another 3D video. So watch this in your VR headset or some other cool way of watching side by side 3D on YouTube. Don't watch it on a normal TV or something. Beat the effort and go watch it in 3D because it will be three dimensional. Uh, so this is me sat in my VR arcade. Uh, I've got six racing seats. So these are all networked together playing a game called Project Cars Pro. So it's essentially Project Cars 2, but with a, a pro spin on it, which makes it easier for kind of us to link everyone together. I have spoken about that game in the past before. It's not really kind of technically supported anymore. And I'd love to replace it and find something better and cheaper. Um, but you know, it is what it is. And to be fair, I've tried all sorts of racing sims and different packages and whatever, and it's still the, the best way of doing it. Um, so we've got sort of six seats set up, all with GT Omega sort of, I think they're called art, uh, sort of uh, cockpits. Uh, they're quite good, they're quite modular. Um, could look a little bit sleeker, I think. But that's my personal preference. I think they look great for when customers come in. We've got the Thrustmaster TXXW, TSXW wheels. Uh, the kind of the core body there, and then we've got some Ferrari wheels. We did have the Spartaco wheels that kind of come with that um, base uh, originally, but with COVID and whatever, we needed something that was kind of wipeable. The Spartaco wheels weren't wipeable; they had like a like a fluffy sort of uh, suede kind of Alcatara type touch to them, so you couldn't really wipe them. So we had to swap them to these. We've kept them on since. I have considered getting some proper sort of like uh, F1 type wheels for it because we do only really work, run F1 or Formula X cars on this game. Um, but you know, uh, I think they work fine. You get people st over steering all the time. Um, the, f the feedback in the steering wheel, they're always going, oh, it's steering itself. Oh, why is it controlling itself? It it's not, you're driving like 200 mile an hour across the grass. That's what happens. The steering wheel is attached to the wheels. A lot of people don't get that, and surprisingly, quite a lot of adults don't get that. So I'm always surprised when uh, adults start complaining about it, but there you go. Uh, we do have three pedal setup. I don't know if you can see that from that angle, but you've got your, your accelerator, your brake, and your clutch. We use the clutch as kind of like the reset pedal, so when people sort of crash, get stuck, can't figure out how to get back, press the clutch and resets them back on the track. Uh, you've got paddle shifters for the most part if people want to do gears. Some people do ask for gear shifters, but I mean, 99.9% .9 of people wouldn't know what they're doing with them even if you had them. So um they wouldn't be able to see them that sort of thing with the headset on so and plus they would sit on them and break them off and whatever trying to get in and out or if the seats were sort of further that would have to be further apart to allow them to kind of not do that uh, no handbrakes uh one of the buttons is assigned to a handbrake but you're racing formula x car so you don't need a handbrake uh we do have like racing lines on in the game to kind of help people slow down we've got wind so we've got wind sort of blowers each side of the the cockpits here so as people accelerate they blow uh, as they kind of turn corners, one blows more than the other. It's all quite refreshing. Uh, surprising how well we've actually got them turned down a bit because they actually blow pretty hard. Um, and people are quite surprised by kind of the effect that it has. Uh, we have kick buttons in the seats as well. So when people kind of hit rumble strips and uh, accelerate and crash or whatever, the seats vibrate. They don't move. Um, and the reason why we didn't get reason we didn't get moving ones is a we'd need more space because obviously they move side to side. You wouldn't be able to fit six in this space. You'd maybe fit three. Um, and also, they cost a lot of money. And I didn't have that money. They were, you know, like 10 grand a set. So I couldn't afford to pay an extra 60 grand for six seats. Uh, so there you go. That's the reason why we don't have them. But most people don't, don't mind it. Um, don't even question it. Uh, some people think, seem to think it helps with motion sickness. I think it does a little bit, but it doesn't cure it. People say it's very motion sick. Um, in, even in this racing, they get motion sick. It's, the, it's definitely the thing that we offer that gives the most motion sickness to certain people. Not everybody. Um, usually kind of the older people that have been driving a lot know how driving feels, that sort of thing, get a bit sort of freaked out by it. Uh, for, but the, for the most part, I'd say most people, 80% or more, are absolutely fine. And those that can do it, love it. You know, as long as you can kind of brake and slow down for the corners, you'll be okay. We do still use the Oculus Rift S headset. So it's been a champion headset. The great thing about the Rift F headset I find is that we just turn off the, the software, the Oculus software, so you don't worry about the Guardian. You just stick it on. The game itself recenters the player to wherever they're sitting. Perfect. Uh, it's nice and wide, super easy to put on. Nice big dial on the back. Uh, really clear picture as well. Uh, people are always kind of taken aback just by being able to look around. Um, are there better headsets out there? Sure. Would I like a set of... Uh, 
HP Reverb G2s for all the, all the races? Sure, but, they, but these do the job. Uh, the only downside to them right now really is they're discontinued. So if they start breaking and we start losing them, then uh, we're gonna have to be just picking up second-hand ones to replace them. But the, the inside-out tracking definitely works better here because they're all sort of much closer together. Never really get any tracking issues. And very occasionally, one in a hundred people might all of a sudden pop underneath their car mid-race, but very, very rare. And we've got a keyboard sh shortcut set up just to tap and it recenters the, their vision, sorts them out in just a second. So we're, we're well prepared for that sort of thing. Um, and it works really well. We also kind of use uh, these seats to play Vox Machina. So I don't know if you know what that game is, it is available on Quest and PC. Uh, we use these as PC, obviously PC headsets. Um, they've all got sort of RTX 2070 Supers in them. Uh, to still power through most games pretty well. Uh, as I say, we do do Vox Machina. So that's, we use Xbox controllers, which are wired up here as well. Uh, I can grab one here. Ooh, there we go. Xbox controller, bam, bam, bam. Playing along, people are like looking around as if they're inside a giant robot, blowing each other up. Six people in the same sort of private LAN server. Actually really good fun. Um, and it was a really good buy for us really to get that kind of game because uh, it was a one and done game. So, so when you license games, project cars, we pay per minute. So every time people race, if they race for 10 minutes, it charges us 10 cents a minute. So it costs us $1 per race. Um, if we've got six people racing at the same time, you know, in 10 minutes, it's charging us $6. Uh, we do charge five pound per race, so thankfully it kind of balances out quite well. Um, and Vox Machina was a one and done, so we paid about fifty pound per license, six licenses. Um, and then once you know we paid it, it's done. You know we don't have to pay anymore, and you can use it as much as you, like, so you don't get paid per try. You just pay a perpetual license to once to be able to use it as much as you like. And the racing, the robots works really well. It's a nice setup. I do come sometimes kind of consider swapping this six headsets into just two standing ones. So the room scale setups that we've got sort of back of the arcade, we've got four of those. Would it be better to have two more of those here? Yes. But then we'd only be able to support six players at the same time. Whereas at the moment we can support 10 players, four on, uh, six on here, four in the gaming. Um, so I think overall it's still the best use of the space. There's nothing better we can do. Plus, we won't have the space for people just sitting around looking and watching and that sort of thing. So, uh, it's staying as it is for now. Um, I think I think in future arcades, I'd still have the race, and I think it's definitely got a value. People do really enjoy it. Those that are pe really enthusiastic about it love it. We get a lot of repeat custom for the racing. Um, so, it's definitely kind of a recommendation if you think about doing a VR arcade, think about getting one or two. I'd say ideally at least two, because that competitive kind of racing against each other nature definitely kind of helps sell it. Um, but we don't often get a group, a full group of six in. I would say the common is probably two. That's probably the most common setup. Maybe one racer is quite probably the next common, more common sort of setup. And then it could be any combination of the other ones, uh, up to six, yeah, uh, on the other combination. So I say if you're doing an arcade, at least get two. And the relatively cheaper setup really anyway. Once you've got your PC, your chassis, your steering wheel, go for something nice and strong, nice and robust. Don't go one of the cheaper wheels, the cheaper uh, sort of motors, because they will break. People are really, really tough on them. You get people pushing and dragging, and they, they're almost not like trying to break it, but part of it is like, in their mind, they think the whole thing's moving. I've had people in here think the whole thing's turning around and that sort of thing, it's not. <laughs> it's clearly not, but they think it is, so they get very tough with it. So you've got to do invest in it, because it will. It does need to last. Don't go with the ch super cheap stuff. Go with the good quality, higher grade stuff. Don't get like the 130 quid wheels. Get like the five, four, five hundred pound wheels. Uh, something that's a good force to be back. Because these wheels, we only have them set to about 60% power. We find that 100% power is just too much for most people. They can't take the, the force feedback, even though it's probably more realistic that way. Um, but yeah, so I don't think there's anything else to kind of explain about the race in here. Uh, five pound per race, we do little deals, we do like a three for two on a Wednesday to get more people in. We have like a monthly leaderboard, just kind of on a certain track, on a certain race. We do use um, the Project Cars sort of control panel itself to launch the races. So there you go, that's a kind of quickish look at our VR racing. Um, I don't know whether you want to see some actual racing of people actually doing the racing and how the, the arcade software is set up itself. We do use Synthesis. VR, which is like a software management platform to kind of license the game, um, makes it nice and easy. Uh, you just install the software on the PCs and then it tracks the minutes and only tracks the time where people are in races, which is good. 
rather than in menus or where it's just kind of sat here kind of waiting for people to play, it doesn't charge us for that. Um, and it also has a leaderboard as well, so we can kind of export, so it pulls all the kind of race times and that lap times and everything out into a leaderboard that we can put on another TV to be able to kind of show players after they've raced or people that are spectating how everyone's doing kind of collectively. It works really well. Uh, still got a few little bugs in it, but they are looking to kind of improve it. They keep tweaking it and changing it on my feedback and uh, bless them, I do keep kind of providing feedback. So they must have a list, the length of whatever, uh, of things I'd like to, to do with it. But for, for the most part, it works really well. Um, I do recommend kind of synthesis. If you're looking at an arcade platform to kind of manage your stations um, and license games through, give them a check out. Give them a, give them a look at least, give them a test. Um, and let them know Remarker sent you. <laughs> but there you go, that's um, that quick video. Well, kickish, I imagine I've waffled on for too long now. But give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. That's fine, I'm big enough and ugly enough to take it. But do let me know in the comments down below if I could do anything better, you want to see me do something improvement. But hopefully you enjoyed that video, and we'll see you again next time. Virtual high five! <laughs>